Hello, one and all, and welcome to JM on Cars. No, wait, that's not me. <laughs> if you're about 19 or 20 and you're looking for your first performance car, it's pretty hard to look beyond the Ford Fiesta ST. They're everywhere, and they seem to represent very, very good value for money. But let's say that you want something that's a little bit different to what every single other 19-year-old owns. Well, you could get a Vauxhall Corsa VXR. But if you want to go even more obscure, there's this. It's the Vauxhall Adam S, formerly known as the Grand Slam. Now, I'm not really into my hot hatches, but I tend to know the ones that are out there. And I must confess, until my friend Alex at Stratton Motor Company took this in part exchange, I had no idea these even existed. And when I looked them up, I thought, wow, they sound like an interesting and maybe unusual choice for someone looking for a first sporty car. So I asked him if I could take it out for a review. And here I am. Let's take a quick look around. I actually quite like the shape of this car. It's very much in the same mold as say, the modern Mini or even the Fiat 500 slash Abarth 595. If you like those cars, I think you'd like the look of this. With the black paintwork, the red accents, little roof spoiler at the back, it's a nice looking car. The interior is actually surprisingly good for an entry level Vauxhall. You've got plenty of leather everywhere and loads of red accents. You've got patches of red leather and red stitching. It really livens the place up. These seats are half leather, half fabric. The current Adam you can actually specify with the same Recaro seats that Lotus used in the Series 1 Evora. And they are some of the best seats available. So I'd highly recommend specking a car with those if you can. You've also got plenty of painted plastics, you've got nice dials, you've got a sunroof, and you've got the obligatory upgraded sound system courtesy in this car of Infinity. You've also got a nice touchscreen, and it just feels like a decent place to be. The only downside is the fact that it is very, very small. Legroom for passengers in the back is quite compromised, and the boot in this car is one of the smallest that I've ever seen. However, if you're gonna use this mostly as a two-seater, you can fold the back seats down and get a little bit of extra storage space in the back. However, all you guys want to know is whether it's any good to drive. So let's take it out. When reviewing a car like this, it's very important to remember what people are going to be comparing this with. I'm very lucky and I get to drive around in 400 brake horsepower sports cars any day of the week. And so when you get in something like this, you of course have to adjust your expectations. That being said, I'm actually very pleased with it, certainly from first impressions. The ride is actually quite decent and it's got a reasonable amount of poke in it. The driving position isn't too bad either. I read some reviews of the car before I drove this one and most of them complained that the driving position was a little bit too high and yeah, sure, you're sat high, but not unnaturally so. I'd say it's probably better than a lot of other cars of this type that I've driven. The dials and gauges are all nice and easy to read. There's plenty of technology in here. It certainly keeps most people happy. I remember when I was looking at cars of this type many, many years ago, you certainly didn't have any of this stuff in them. Sounds so old. As I'm currently stuck behind a Vauxhall Zafira, this seems like a good time to elaborate a point that I make in many of my videos. I'm currently sat in a Vauxhall Adam, which is supposed to be the smallest of all the cars that they make. In front of me is a 10-year-old Zafira. Now, that car is supposed to be a very big car. I've just passed it and I was eye-level with the lady driving it. It doesn't feel like I'm in a smaller car than that Zafira. That's how much cars have grown. However, as you'll have noticed, you can get past the Zafira in one of these, which of course is very, very good. It's actually pretty pokey. A little bit of torque steer coming through. Moves through the bends quite nicely. The steering is odd. It, the, the assistance is very strong. It's very powerful. Oh, it's, it, it pulls you all over the road. This is a very poorly surfaced road. But the car rides really well, actually. It's very, very easy, particularly in this market segment, to make a car unnecessarily stiff. I think a lot of people just equate stiffness with sportiness, and actually, the two are not always the same at all. Good damping does not necessarily need to be that stiff. You can have a car firmly damp without it being crashy, but this is actually quite pleasant. You can bounce down this road quite well. 
actually very impressed with it, to be honest. I'm liking it a lot more than I thought I would. It has not the biggest amount of feedback through the wheel, apart from it pulling you all over the place when you're on the throttle on badly cambered roads, but I'd be a very, very harsh judge if I tried comparing the steering in an entry-level Vauxhall with that from a Lotus. Well, there's another Vauxhall people carrier, another Zafira holding us up. I wonder how many Zafiras we can pass today. This one's giving up the ghost though, obviously they've seen the Adam approaching in their rearview mirror and decided that it's just not worth the fight. Gearbox is pleasant to use. Six speeds as well, which is very good. Means you're not going to be revving too hard when you're cruising on the motorway. Train tracks. Hardly even felt those. Very good. The engine's interesting. It doesn't give you too much poke from low down, but it's got a good surge of mid-range torque, very typically turbocharged engine. You can ride it basically between about three and four and a half is kind of where you're going to sit for this sort of progress. But I'm not a very big Vauxhall fan at all. It pains me greatly that my Evora does share some switch gear with this car, but I'm actually really enjoying bouncing down the road in this car. Car still reasonably refined as well. It's not at all too noisy in here. You've got plenty of creature comforts. The seats are nice and very adjustable. It's a good car, actually. I don't know why I didn't know about these. I knew about the Adam, but I just didn't realize that they'd made a sporty variant. I think perhaps a bit like the Alfa Mito, maybe the shame is that it's not a bad car. Simply, most people buying one just wanted the cheapest one that they could get, and so I think that this variant has been very much forgotten. There's only really one big problem remaining with this car, and that unfortunately is the price. I went on to the Vauxhall configurator yesterday to see just how much one of these would actually cost were you to buy it new. The base price is £18,000. If you spec it up quite a bit, you can easily spend over £20,000. And unfortunately, that puts it right in the sights of the Fiesta ST. A car which is just being replaced, but is going to have a lot more power than this, probably a few more toys, and be generally a little bit more recognizable. You know, Fiesta's got a very good supply of aftermarket tuning parts, and that makes it very popular with the young guys that really do care about their cars. And that's a shame because there's nothing really wrong with this. I actually quite like it. I'm sure your Vauxhall dealer will be able to do you a discount. How much of a discount? I couldn't tell you. What I can tell you is that this example is currently for sale at Stratton Motor Company, and I'm sure Alex there will be happy to talk to you about selling it if you want to buy it. I'd certainly recommend it. Not necessarily over a Fiesta ST, but as an alternative, definitely. Certainly if you were considering buying something like a 595 above, certainly say the entry level one, the 135, definitely try this. You might be surprised. If nothing else, you're going to stand out from the crowd. And in a marketplace like that, it's kind of hard to do that. So yeah, I like the Adam S. Who'd have thought? Come on, you little bastard. <laughs>